Hey gang and welcome to your very first Node and Express authentication tutorial with JSON Web Tokens. Okay then, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a simple authentication system using Node, Express, MongoDB and JSON Web Tokens where users can sign up they can log in, log out again, and we'll also see how to protect certain routes or pages from unauthenticated users. Now, in the end, we're going to end up with a very simple application like this. It's not going to win any design awards, but it does the job. So we have a login form and also a sign up form. We also have a smoothies or recipes page, but that is protected from unauthenticated users. So unless you have an account and are logged in, you won't be able to see that page and it will just redirect you to the login screen. So let me create an account. So I'm going to say Luigi at and we'll say Google.com test one, two and sign up. And once we do that, we should be able to see the recipes screen right here. Okay. And we also see welcome Luigi at google.com. Now, if we log out, then we're not going to be able to see that screen over here again. We have to log in. So let me say Luigi at google.com and test one, two, log in, and we should be able to see the screen again. So this is the website and this is the authentication system we're going to put into place on it in this series. Now, before we start, I want to make it clear from the offset that this is not a beginner node tutorial. Authentication can be a really complex subject, and I would expect you already to understand at least the very basics of Node, Express, and MongoDB using Mongoose. Now, you should know how to set up an Express app and hook it up with MongoDB. You should also understand the different types of requests we can handle using Express, things like post requests and get requests. And you should understand what middleware is and how to use it. So if you don't have a clue what I'm going on about, you can learn all about that from my Node crash course right here on this channel. Now, I'd also expect you to have a decent grasp of JavaScript and in particular asynchronous code, things like promises, callbacks, async and await and JSON data. If you want to learn more about that, then definitely check out my modern JavaScript course on Udemy. So the links to both of these are going to be down below. So to manage this authentication system, we're going to be using JSON Web Tokens or JWTs for short. And they are just one way in which we can implement authentication. It's a very popular way to implement auth into websites and REST APIs, and it's also extremely flexible too. Now, another way to add authentication to your website would be to use sessions, but that will have to wait for another tutorial on another day. So we're going to learn much more about JSON Web Tokens and how they work later on. But first of all, I want to get up and running with a basic Express starter app. So then I have created a starter project for this series, which you're going to find on this repo right here, Node Express JWT Auth. This link is going to be down below. And incidentally, this is also where each lesson's source code is as well. So if you want to see the code for a particular lesson, you can select that lesson from the branch drop down, for example, lesson six, and you'll see all of that code right here. What I'm going to do to get the starter project is go to lesson one, and I'm going to click on this code button, and I'm going to download a zip folder for this project. So once that's downloaded, just open it up, unzip it, and open it in a text editor. I'm going to be using VS Code, but you use whichever text editor you prefer. All right, so as you can see, I've downloaded that zip folder and unzipped it. So it's right here. And I'm just going to rename this so it's a bit shorter. So I'll take off the lesson one at the end. And then I'm going to right click this and I'm just going to open it up with VS Code right here. So this, my friends, is a simple starter project and I'm just going to walk you through it right now. So let's start off with the package.json right here, just to show you the different dependencies we have. And uh, right here, we can see we have EJS, which is the templating engine we're going to use for our views. We have Express to make the Express application and also Mongoose to interact with MongoDB for us. So they're the different dependencies that we're going to install. And the first thing we need to do is actually run npm install to install those because notice we don't have the node modules folder. So let me do that by typing npm install. 
Okay, so now that's done, we could run this if we wanted to by saying nodemon. And by the way, if you want to install nodemon, it's just npm install nodemon hyphen g to install it globally. And this allows us to start up an express or node application. And it's just going to auto restart the server for us whenever we make a change to a file and save it. So I'm going to say nodemon and then run the app file over here to run this. And then we can see that it started. So if I bring over a browser let me just visit this localhost port 3000 so this is the starter project so at the minute it's just a home screen right here with a title and if we click on this it directs to the home screen and also we have this view recipes button right here which goes to forward slash smoothies and we have these different smoothies so that's all there is to it just these two pages for this starter project but i am going to walk you through the code right now so let us first of all go to app.js so this is the file we ran down here node on app it kickstarts our node application so the first thing we do is import or require express and mongoose and by the way if any of this goes over your head definitely check out my node crash course for beginners first of all the link to that is going to be down below anyway once we have those two we're starting up an express app right here and then we say we want to use the static middleware so this is so we can serve static files like css to the browser and we're saying all of that is going inside the public folder so you can see inside the public folder we just have a styles.css and a smoothie.png which is this big smoothie right here okay so back to app.js then we register the view engine by saying app.set view engine and specifying ejs so that for our views we're going to use ejs and then down here this is the database connection so we'll come back to that in a minute so down here we're saying we're going to register a couple of routes first of all one for the home page which is rendering the home view which is over here and then secondly a get request handler for forward slash smoothies and that renders the smoothies view over here so this was the home page and this was the smoothies view okay so let's take a quick look at those views so the home first of all is just a simple header and then we have a div with a class of smoothie to add this smoothie image and remember that's this thing right here and then under this we have the headings an h2 and an h3 and then finally a button right here saying view recipes so when we click on that it goes to forward slash smoothies we then render this view instead smoothies and all this is is just a ul with some different classes and inside each li tag we have an image to that smoothie again um, an h4 for the title of the smoothie and a p tag with the ingredients so dead simple html and to be honest none of this really matters it can be whatever html that you want because it's not going to interfere with our authentication system it's basically some dummy content now you're going to also notice at the top of both of these views we have an include for the header so right here and also a right here and as well we have one at the bottom of both views for the footer now they are both inside the partials folder and this is the header so all we're doing is linking up to that styles.css file which is found in the public folder right here remember we made this folder public by using static right here so we can access that from the header and then we have a nav where we say inside just one link ninja smoothies and that's this title at the top okay now the footer is dead simple all we do is we have this copyright notice we close off the body and close off the html so dead dead simple now i'm not going to walk you through all of the styles it's dead simple we import a font from google and that is quicksand and we use that inside our project and then we've just got some basic styles for the different elements on those two views now if you want to look through this feel free i'm not going to walk you through it because this is not a css course and again it has no impact on what we're going to do with our authentication but incidentally i've created styles for our authentication forms which we will be using in the future they're not there the right here okay so we have these styles so when we create forms in the future they are going to look a bit nicer all right so that is our starter project so the only thing left to go over is the database connection code right here which is this chunk of code inside app.js 
So all of this should be kind of familiar because I am expecting that you already know how to connect to a MongoDB database using Mongoose and then interact with it. If you know none of that, definitely check out the video which is going to be down below all about MongoDB and setting up a database and connecting to it, okay? But I am going to walk through this as well. So first of all, we have our DB URI. This is a connection string, so we can connect to the database. I've already created this one, but I'll walk you through the steps of doing that in a second. Down here, we say mongoose.connect to connect to this connection string, this database right here. And then the second argument is an options object with a few different properties that just basically allow us to run the code without any kind of deprecation warnings or errors down in the console. Because this is asynchronous, it returns a promise. Once it's done, we can fire a function, which is then going to spin up the local server and listen for requests on port 3000. Now, we want to place this here because we don't want to listen for requests before we've connected to the database, only after we've successfully connected to it. We can also catch any errors if there are any right here. And in that case, we don't listen to port 3000. And instead, we just log that error to the console. OK, so you'll need your own connection string for your own database right here instead of mine. And by the way, inside this, we have a username and password for the database as well. Now, don't try to use this one because once I've finished recording this series, I'm going to delete it. So it's not going to work. You need to create your own. Now, I did that on the MongoDB website using a cloud database. So you can do this for free by going to MongoDB.com, get a free account and then log into that account. I'm just going to log in right here with Google. And like I said, I already created a database, but I'm going to actually delete this and go from the beginning so that you can see how I've done it. So let me just terminate this. First of all, I need to enter the cluster name in here, which is cluster zero and terminate it. OK, and now that's done. This is the screen that you should see the first time that you log in to this console. So all we need to do is build a cluster and we're going to get a shared cluster, which is free and then choose a provider and then a location. I'm going to keep these as the default. You can give this a custom name if you want to as well. Again, I'm going to keep this as the default value, then create the cluster. That's just going to take a minute or so to create. All right, so now that's created, we can go ahead and create a new users collection because ultimately we want to store users in this database. Now, at first you might see this as being grayed out, but don't worry, eventually it will be clickable. So click on that and then we want to add our own data. Now, first of all, we need to actually make a database. We've made a cluster, but not a database. So I'm going to call this node hyphen auth, call it what you want. And then the collection name is going to be users. So definitely it's plural. And that's important when we come to make our mongoose model later on. It has to be plural. So users. All right. So I'm going to create that collection now. And now we can see the database name and the collection right here. So there's no documents inside the collection at the minute, but we're going to do that programmatically as we add more users later on. OK, so the last thing we need to do is give access to this database. And to do that, go to database access. And I've already created a user. And remember, we need this for our connection string where we have a username and a password. So if you want to create a new database user, click on this button right here and enter in a new username and a password. And then we need to make sure it has read and write access. OK, so then add the user. So I've already done that and I've got the username of Sean and a password of test1234. Make sure you create a better password than that. And uh, now I'm going to go back to clusters and now I'm going to connect to this to get our connection string. So we want to choose this option right here, connect your application. And this is the string we need right here. So copy that and then we want to go back to our code and we want to take this string and replace it with what we've just copied. So delete that and paste this in. Now, there's a few things I want to do to this. First of all, over here at the right, everything after DB name we can delete because we don't need any of that. Then instead of DB name, we want to insert the name of our database. Remember, I call this node auth, but whatever you called it, place that there. Then the username for the user you just created for your database. 
So mine was Sean, and then the password over here for me is gonna be test1234. Okay, so now we're connecting to this database with these credentials, and then when that's successful, we're listening for requests. So I'm just gonna save this, open up my terminal, and run this again to make sure everything still works, Nodemon app, and hopefully it should start up the server. Yes, it does. Okay then my friends, so that's the starter project all set up and connected to MongoDB. Next up, we're gonna start by creating the authentication routes and controllers.